Hey, I'm Tommy, and this is the Sigma 18 to 35 f 1.8 EF mount, a really popular lens among a lot of people for a long time. This lens is also the Sigma 18 to 35 1.8, but it's been converted into a cine lens by PC Hood Cinematics. It took an old Sigma 18 to 35, took all the glass out of it, and rehoused it into this cinema body. These lenses are the same glass, so they should produce the same image. So why would you pay fifteen to seventeen hundred dollars to rehouse this lens into this one? Well, first and most obviously, it looks really cool. And if you want clout on Instagram, this is the first step you should take. I'm just kidding. This is now a cinema lens, so it will work with follow focus systems that have gears built in to control the iris, the aperture, and the focus. Speaking of the iris, this lens is also declicked now and it has a smooth aperture. Now the aperture throw on this is very short, so I mean that's not ideal, but it is declicked and it's smooth. The other and probably the most interesting difference for me and why I would mostly consider doing this is this lens is now parfocal. Now if you were to zoom in or zoom out with this lens and you had it on manual focus, you would notice whatever you zoom in or zoom out of, it, it's no longer in focus by the time you get to your next focal length. It is a completely manual lens, so there's no autofocus anymore, but it's parfocal, so if you zoom in or zoom out, it remains in focus the entire time. That's really important if you're trying to do slow, smooth zooming shots and you want to stay in focus. It also means if you have a person who's trying to pull focus, it's going to be a lot easier if you're also zooming in and zooming out. When it goes through the conversion, it does get quite a bit heavier and you're able to pick your own custom colors with this lens. I picked the champagne and red, but there's also blue and you can do black and a few others. It's on their website. It also converts it from an F1.8 into a T2. So f-stops and t-stops are a little bit different. All you really need to know is t-stops are much more consistent and accurate as opposed to f-stops, which are somewhat of an estimate. And that's that's really about it. If you wanted to actually buy Sigma's version of the Sigma 18 to 35 in a cine lens, it costs about $3,000. And if you want to save about 50% on that, then you would go with a conversion from their photo lens. The only disadvantage to this is when you convert it into the cine lens, it introduces a tiny bit of focus breathing. And I've seen it worse in other reviewers. In mine, it doesn't look so bad. I think maybe they've improved their process a little bit, but you also save about $1,500. So it's uh, it's whatever you need. Uh, I'd say if you wanna save some money, grab these. So let's do some side-by-side -side comparisons, comparing uh, the parfocalness and the image quality and f1.8 versus t2 because those are really the only things that are super different Also, if you're coming from something like the GH5 and you're going into a Sony a7S III, which is a full frame camera, the Sigma 18 to 35 only uh, covers the entire sensor from focal lengths like 28 to 35. Anything beyond that, then uh, you introduce heavy vignetting because this is not a full frame lens. But the way the vignetting looks is quite different on the cine lens versus the photo lens, and I'll show you that here. So if you have a Sigma 18-35 and you wanted to go to something like the Sony a7S III, I would say sell the Sigma 18-35, don't buy the Sigma MC11. Use all that money towards getting yourself a Sigma 24-70 f2.8 for the Sony E-mount. Because this is one of my favorite lenses. But if you're getting something like the Red Komodo, this lens will cover the entire sensor. There's only a tiny itty bit little piece of vignetting at the very widest. Um, so it, it works fine on the Komodo. I tested it before I sold my Komodo. What I noticed is in the short period of time that I had the Red Komodo and both of these lenses, while the rehoused PZ Hood Cinematics Sigma 18 to 35 is really cool and it's fun to use um, behind the camera. When I'm trying to record myself, I always found myself reaching for the old cheapo Sigma 18 35 because the autofocus worked really well and that's what I needed. But if I needed to do a zooming focus shot, I would always reach for this one because of course it's parfocal and it's smoother and easier to use in that respect. In lieu of a fat commission, I asked them for a coupon code for you guys to save some money. 
And so if you use the coupon code Tommy, you'll save 5% on your order. If you wanna get set up with one of these, a link to their website is in the description of this video. This whole video was recorded on my A7S III and I used my own LUTs. While I had the red, I was able to uh, match the colors to the Sony. And while it's not scientific, it is artistic and I think that it looks really good. So I'm selling all the LUTs that I've ever made for the A7S III for 10 bucks. And you can find a link to that in the description of this video as well. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace.